Potterworld MC, the largest Harry Potter based Minecraft server. You get to become a wizard and explore the huge map which is strongly inspired by the Harry Potter series. You also get to attend classes taught by real people, do quests, fight a variety of mobs, play mini games such as Quidditch and so much more. It all started back in 2014 with a person known as Drabbles, who today is the owner of the Potterworld MC server. He never intended to make a server at all. He and his friend just wanted to build their own version of Hogwarts in Minecraft after seeing a few other servers that had done so themselves. About three months in, his friend got kind of bored of it all and then it became Drabble's own project. He finished the rest of the castle by himself and then he invited some people to come to see it. Many of these people were interested in helping him make it to a server and it launched from there. On April 12, 2013, he officially made a forum post on minecraftforum.net announcing the public server which would be up 24-7. Anyone could now join, though there wasn't really much to do besides exploring the castle. Players did already have a form of a wand that looked like a big stick, but was actually just a reskin bow that could shoot fireballs. This was replaced quite soon by a wand system that could actually cast different spells and is almost the same that is used today. A few months later the castle was finished and they now started working on some other things such as private drive which is the road where Harry Potter lives, the St. Pancras train station and also Diagon Alley which is a wizarding alley and shopping area. They kept on adding small updates to it and on September 12, 2014 they added player vaults to the Gringotts bank. To unlock your first vault you had to pay 16 galleons and to access it you had to go on a quite long minecart ride inside the bank. Back then you could unlock a total of 53 vaults which each had 45 slots for items. This meant that you would store over 2300 different item stacks in your bank. On March 5th Drumbler made a big announcement for the next update which would come out just a few days after. This update totally revamped the spell system, replacing the old way of leveling spells which required you to get XP and do tests to improve your spells. All spells now had 7 levels. The spell would improve with each level and by that become more powerful. Each level for a spell would be unlocked to be learned when moving to the next Hogwarts spells. year. This means that if a player was in year 3, the player could only level his or her spells up to level 3 and couldn't level them any further until he or she reached a higher Hogwarts year, maxing out at 7. All spells now also had a cast counter that internally counted how many times the player had successfully casted that spell. After reaching a set cast requirement for each spell level, yeah. the spell would automatically level up, sending the player a message about what has changed about the spell. The spell would only count if it successfully hit a mob or a player, though some spells like Lumus didn't require a target to practice casting. This update also added a chance for spells to fizzle, which means it can fail to cast. Dumbledore personally felt it more fitting that not so experienced wizards, like ones from the books and movies, should have harder time learning spells and casting them. This makes it more realistic. Now when you leveled up a spell, the chance for it to fizzle diminishes till the player succeeds at casting it every time. All spells were now also unlockable by NPC named the Spellmaster, where you could unlock spells using academic credits. Before this update, many spells were only obtainable by going to specific classes, which could make the game quite difficult for players from non-American countries because of time zones. Because this would become the only way to obtain spells, their prices were significantly lowered so that it takes fewer classes to unlock a spell because this NPC did already exist before. They also introduced free tests that would reward test credits. These test credits would be used to buy a key spell in years 4, 5, 6 and 7. The reason for this is to bring more authentic Potter experience of having to take the Wombats, Olds and Newts tests. Before this update, all academic credits were also physical items obtainable through classes. But they were now all transferred to digital ones to stop players from trading them with another. In the same month, on the 29th, 3D1 models were released to Potterworld, replacing the plain old 2D ones 
that literally were just big sticks. Just a few days later, on April 4th, they also added hats to the game, that you, like many of the one models, could purchase from the store. This added two new ways for players to donate to the server, and the community was very pleased with these new cosmetic updates. On May 8th, the daily riddles were introduced. Each day, a new riddle would be posted on an info board in game and on the website. Players would have to solve the riddle and travel to the location that it talks about. If they successfully did this, they would receive an academic credit, which could be used to unlock a new spell and get to the next year. It was absolutely forbidden to help others with these riddles, and changing the location publicly could result in a server ban. On May 15, a big new potion system was released. There were now different potion tiers, such as Explosive, Uncommon, Normal and Rare. The better the tier, the better the potion. To brew a potion, you first had to unlock the recipe, which you could do by right-clicking a potion recipe book, which you could either get from classes or a potion recipe NPC that sold all the recipes. When brewing a potion, the player had to do it quickly, because if the player was too slow, the potion would explode which deleted all the ingredients already put into the cauldron. Some other ways to fail the potion was to have the wrong temperature when putting in a new ingredient or stirring the potion the wrong way. Personally, I really liked the system of brewing because it was really stressful which made it a lot of fun. A few months after the release, on September 17th, many of the names Potter World were using were changed due to copyrights and trademarks. Potter World MC didn't want to get in any trouble with Warner Brothers or J.K. Rowling, so they decided to change quite a few of the in-game names to their own version. Gryffindor became Gryffin, Slytherin became Serpent, Death Eaters became Dark Followers, and so on. And even many of the spell names were changed. As the Halloween event for 2015, Azkaban was released to the Potterworld server, and it had been taken over by the Dark Wizard Lord Yasmir. Players had to fight their way to the top of Azkaban, where they would face him. Defeating this boss would grant players some galleons and a special spell that was only available during this event. This boss was very difficult to beat, and because of that, you needed a group to defeat him. On December 11th, 2015, Potterworld's survival world was opened for beta testing. The survival world took place in medieval times, where most structures weren't built yet leaving players to play normal Minecraft survival with Potterworld's magic. Players got a wand after finishing a short beginner's quest in a safe area. With this wand, they could learn and cast most spells that were in a normal Potterworld server to use them to fight mobs, players and more. To get to the survival world, players had to have a time turner and to obtain it, they had to have the spell a parrot and 20,000 galleons to purchase it. The price was so high because they only wanted a few players to beta test and was lowered full release 3 months later to 50 galleons. In early 2016, the previous private drive and Hogsmeade houses that used to be rented out on the main world for players to decorate and set up shops in were removed. Instead, players received their own housing plot where they could build whatever they want without distributing any builds around them and having to pay a regular rent. The housing plugin hasn't changed much since its release and is still mostly the same today. A few days later, on the 13th March, flow powder was also added to Potterworld. You could now buy flow powder and use it to travel to some specific places that you port key, which was an item that allowed you to teleport to many places that you had visited, had no teleports to. Lastly, this update also changed the amount of vaults you could have, from 54 to 12. July 9th, 2016 was a very sad day for players that played on the survival server. On this day, this server was officially closed to free up server space for the normal Potterworld server. The survival server had evolved quite a bit in the 7 month it had been available. It had dungeons and many quests, while also still being the survival server it had once started as. It had basically evolved into its own game, but could now never be played again. On November 16, the trading house was released to Potterworld. Here players could easily buy and sell items. Before this, players had to use their own players shops which costed money but now it would become much easier to sell items as well as finding the right items to buy at the best price. No big updates happened for a while, until the 1st of July 2017 
when Griffin Hollow, aka Godric's Hollow, as it's called in Harry Potter, was released. It included hundreds of houses, shops, and also featured famous locations such as the Potter, uh, I mean Porter family house, and Saint Germain's graveyard and church. In the same month, the Daily AC system was also changed as the first step for the quest introduction. From that day on, to get a riddle, you would need to go to the Tommy Riddle NPC. Clicking on him would open a GUI where you could accept your daily quest. From the moment the player accepted it, they had 24 hours to complete this riddle. After that time, the riddle would expire and disappear. Once the player had found out where the riddle could lead, they would have to go to that location. Then they would either simply need to walk into the area described in the riddle, or they had to find a specific NPC or a block. This meant that leaks of the solution for the daily riddle would no longer be harmful and players were now allowed to help each other solve each other's riddles. On June 9th, 2018, a big update was released to Potterworld, which got the name The Exploration Update. This update contained a new leveling system that included the ability to upgrade your player with talents. With this update, there were now 80 levels that you could level up to, each one awarding you a new spell. This replaced the old system of where you could choose what spell you would learn next, and once you learned all the spells, you would go to the next year. Now instead, you would get to the next Hogsworth year each 10 levels. With the new talent system, you could assign points to different trees, unlocking buffs and new spells. At level 80, you had 9 skill points to assign, which was far from enough to upgrade everything, so you had to choose wisely of what buffs you wanted. Then also, a profession system that included three different professions that you could level up was added. The three different professions that were added were cooking, herbology and potions. The last one replacing the old potion system. To cook food, make a potion or grow a herb, you simply had to get the right ingredients and use a profession station with them. Then you had to wait and once it was finished, you could collect it. And to get the resources for the different professions, you could use resource nodes which on click would give you a resource with a cooldown of 6 hours or kill mobs. This you could do in the new wilderness area that you could travel to by a boat at the boathouse. This new area contained many new towns and mobs and allowed for a lot of new exploration. In March 2019, Quabble Ball was released as a mini game on Potterboard. This was not the first mini game to be released. Others that already existed were Melting Floor, Spell Wars, Hide and Seek and Flying. And this game made a great addition to these mini games and Potter World. Quabble matches are played on an oval pitch with three ring shaped goals of different heights on each side, between two opposing teams of seven players each. Three passes, two bruisers, the defender, and the searcher. The passes and the defender respectively score with and defend the goals against the Quabble. The two bruisers throw blunderbolts which dismount hit players from their broom, and the searcher locates the tiny snidget whose capture wins searches team a lot of points. This is almost the same as Harry Potter's Quidditch and it's a really fun game to play for Harry Potter fans. On the 7th July 2020, the Revelius update was released to Potter World, which is the biggest update ever. First of all, most of the world was now connected, so you could now walk or fly in between most places. This also came with the world map and oh my gosh, this map is enormous. It's a total of 7,000 by 12,000 blocks. With this new map, there are also a few new towns added and many new quests that often follow the longer storyline. Many spells were also changed around in terms of levels they attained at, damage, cooldowns and more. A new spell tree system was also introduced, replacing the old tree system. There were now 5 spell trees. Charms, Jinxes, Curses, Transfiguration and Defensive. Each spell tree now had 10 spells that could be upgraded 3 times using spell points. The amount of spell points you put in each spell will affect damage, debuff duration and more. This is a great new system for players to customize their character and upgrade the spells they like the most. With this update, professions were also changed. Herbology now just required collecting herbs and plants. Cooking food would now only take a 3 seconds instead of the long time it took before. And the new advanced potion system was added that required the player to interact with multiple nodes to make a potion. Players now had to use a cauldron, brewing stat, chopping board and a furnace. This is more similar to the old potion system and if you interact with them in the wrong order, you would fail your potion. Another huge change with this update was the implementation of gear. 
Without gear, you would be equivalent to a level 1 player in terms of stats. The gear pieces that were implemented were head, body, legs, boots, hand and trinket, which each have many different attributes including health, damage, defense, cooldowns and more. Lastly, the travel system was also changed a lot. Now that the world was connected, the staff team wanted to encourage traveling around by broom and foot so that people would explore the map more. For this, the warp key bag was removed and replaced with the new warp key, which allowed you to set a home at one place that you could teleport during click, instead of having the option to teleport to most places without needing to travel. Using the flow network now also got more expensive, and many of the fire dust network locations were removed. To compensate for this, the need to eat food was removed and every player now always had full hunger. And that update marks the end for this video, but it definitely doesn't mark the end for Potterworld. I asked the headmaster Dribbledore and he said that the world map is nowhere close to done, as there are two continents unopened and unexplored. They also plan to open more wizarding schools, add more towns and different challenges like dungeons, world bosses and orders. Thank you so much for making it to the end. If you would like to watch another server history video, you can see one I made of Wincroft on the screen right now. And if you have any other servers you would like me to do a full server history on, tell me down below in the comments. Bye bye guys, see you guys next time!